みのみまみもにまみなもも Hello! I'm Evan, the education program leader for the National Music Center. Someday I'll come at you from Studio Bell, home of the National Music Center, but for today I'm coming at you from the dank dungeon of dance, home of me and that spider over there. In this video, we're going to use the National Music Center's Instrument Exploration Toolkit to look at one of these. Well, in a set. Indeed, we're going to look at how this is designed, we're going to figure out what part of it vibrates, how do we put energy into it to make it vibrate, then we want to control the vibration. Can we control the pitch? Can we control the volume? We will do a bit to describe the timbre, and of course we will try to make music. We're also going to make a quick and easy craft for all of those who don't have a drum set in their house, or do have a drum set but uh, aren't supposed to play it all the time. You can still practice rhythm. One of the things I like about the Instrument Exploration Toolkit is sometimes a question can be very difficult, and sometimes that same question can be very easy depending on what instrument you're looking at. For instance, you know what part of this instrument vibrates. It's the skin or the head of the drum. I don't even know if I can ask you whether it's struck, pluck, air, or electric. It might be too easy. Drums have been the poster child for struck instruments for who knows how long. You know it's a struck instrument, and you know you strike it with one of these. Drumsticks are wonderful instruments in and of themselves. They have lovely balance. They're just the right weight, and they have a great bounce. We take our drumstick, and we hit the membrane, and it wiggles back and forth. You can probably also guess how I get different volumes out of it. I tap it gently. It only vibrates a little bit. If I hit it harder, skin moves a lot. My favorite definition of music is that it's a pattern of sound. And patterns are so important to humans. In fact, if you ask me, I think that's all our brain does. It's built to find patterns. And drums are one of the best ways to make patterns out of sound that we've ever created. Drums may have been one of the most ancient instruments. You can find drums in almost every culture. This could mean that they were invented before humans scattered around the planet, or they're so important to humans that every culture has come up with some sort of drum. Either way, it's super neat. So let's build the drum set piece by piece and see how each part works together to build a pattern of sound. How do you build the beat? First, you want to start with something called a pulse. You can think of the pulse like the tick of the metronome, the walking pace of the music. If you're walking too fast, that's not the pulse, so you subdivide. On a drum set, most of the time, the pulse is created with the hi-hat. The hi-hat holds two cymbals on it. At its core, a cymbal is a stretched out bell. Really, it's just built to ring and ring and ring. And... We often think of cymbals as the things you crash against each other. On a drum set, the face is one up and the other one goes here. And then it's connected to a foot pedal. So I can lift them up or put them together. So the tap, tap, tap on the hi-hat gives the very steady beat. Now, of course, if this was all rhythm was, this would get boring. The pattern's too simple. It's just the same sound over and over again. So we want to organize the pulse into different parts. Often the way we do this is we create things called downbeats and upbeats. Remember, a lot of music is connected to dancing and movement, so especially when we're building rhythms, these words downbeats and upbeats are related to how the body wants to move. So we could say that the timbre of the pulse sound is short, light. Downbeats, on the other hand, are usually heavy, deep, a low pitch, makes our body want to move down. Typically on a drum set, the downbeat is provided by this, the largest part of the instrument, the lowest pitch sound, it is the kick drum. You could also call this a bass drum. So now with this setup, I can take my pulse and organize it. I also have some choices here. I could do it every four. Maybe I want to do it every three. Maybe I don't want to do it just once. I can slow a pulse down or speed it up. keeps its pattern. Now this is better than just the pulse, but with just a downbeat, makes our body want to move down, so we need something that will lift us up. So we have something called an upbeat. There's a drum, I have a missing drum. I need my snare. So a snare drum's not really all that different from a tom drum, except the outside is usually made out of metal. 
but it's still a skin. Of course, the major difference with a snare drum. On the bottom, I have these little rattles or snares. They're bits of metal. If I tighten them up, we get a lovely splash of noise. Most drum patterns of modern music are built around these three sounds. We have our pulse, we have our downbeat, and we have our upbeat. And there's a lot of variety you can do within this. Notice this hand is still always tapping my pulse. So what's the rest of the drum set for? The rest of my drum set is built out of tom drums and cymbals. Usually drum sets have a few different sizes of tom. This one's big enough that they put little legs on it, so it's called the floor tom. The bigger the tom drum, the lower pitch. Then we have these beauties, which also come in a variety of sizes and thicknesses. The largest and thickest is called the ride cymbal. The thinner cymbal that goes on this side is called the crash. Drummers usually use this part of the drum set for transitions, like into the chorus. These are often called drum fills. So let's say you want to practice the drums, but you don't have a drum set or you're not in a place where you can really make that much noise. We are going to take the elements of the drum set and simplify them, getting your leg and your arms moving to create a beat. The hat, the snare, and the kick. As a substitute for the hi-hat sound, I'm going to use a shaker. I made this one out of a water bottle. I put some beans inside. Try different kinds of beans or rice and you'll get a different kind of shaker. You can also use an egg. The shaker I'm going to attach to my foot. To make a foot attacher, take a piece of duct tape, and two thick rubber bands. This rubber band I'm going to put around the outside, midway down, and place it there. Now this one I'm going to put on this side, fold this over. There we go. This around my foot. Come on in here. So now my foot gives me the pulse. For my downbeat, I'm going to use one of these. Now instead of using these drumsticks, which are a bit heavy, I'm going to go with some smaller dowels. I take my balloon, put it in between my knees. This gives me a nice low thud. This is my downbeat. I need an upbeat. I'm actually just going to fold up a little piece of paper. A little piece of tape for the paper keeps it on my knee. So it's not a perfect substitution, but I have my three elements that can all work together to create similar patterns. And if I want to get some crash or splash, I can always find a pot lid. I can usually get these in packs of 10 at the dollar store and they will not break your balloon. If you're stabbing it, uh, might pop. If you don't have these at home, you could also use chopsticks, although make sure there's no splinters in them. Don't be worried if this isn't easy right away. It takes time to put this stuff into your muscle memory. Just getting this hit along with that tap is good practice. You can build up. Or if you're getting overwhelmed, just take one of the elements out. If you're not digging the balloon in the knees thing, you can always stuff it in a tube. Just squeeze it in. There isn't one right way to do this. You can build patterns of sounds out of anything. So whether you're using a drum set or not, try building a beat. Drumming will help you with every single instrument you ever try. The better rhythmic sense you can get, the better musician you can be. So find some sticks, start whacking, and until next time, happy exploring. Thanks for watching today. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.